ഹമദുഹുനസ്തുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹുഹു
no matter who we are, no matter what we do in our lives, when Ramadan comes, there are so many good habits that become the part of our lives. But it's not just to become the part of our lives in this month only. These are to be carried on in our life from the here on. So I actually want to start the khutbah with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, man asks, ayyu al-a'mali afdalu ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, adwamuha wa inqal. That the things that you do consistently, even if they're little. I mean, that's the key point there. Even if they're little, if you do something consistently, that is what will help you. And that is what a habit is. A habit is not uh, getting up one night and worshipping Allah the whole night and not to wake up again after that. A real habit is what you do every day, even if it's small in number. So really what I want to do, um, we want to start this Ramadan, this uh, month with a momentum, with a momentum that we can carry on in our lives till the last day and inshallah if Allah allows us and Allah gives the barakah in our life that we take these habits into the months after Ramadan as well. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to raise this pandemic, uh, these restrictions and uh, to take this waba away from us so that we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the masajid and we can go back in it and worship Allah in a community space and so we can uh, uh, you know feed on each other's uh, motivation in order to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so really one of the things that I want to uh, give you today I want to give you five things five things for the month of Ramadan that will help you in order to develop your uh, Ramadan and to make it one of the best Ramadans of your life. And to really start with the first thing that I want to ponder on and the, the, the thing that is really very important in our life is to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what we do my brothers and sisters we are going to sin. We are human beings that make mistakes every day, every minute, every hour of our lives. We are making, constantly making mistakes. Where constantly there is room for improvement in our lives. And making all these mistakes, we make so many mistakes. Also even making all these mistakes, we need to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, whenever you make a mistake, if you return back to me, I am the one, I am the one who will forgive you. I am the one who will grant you whatever you need. And you know, having said that, as uh, hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes, an amazing hadith that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us, and such a great hadith that we need to understand the mercy of Allah when it comes to repentance. يُنَزِّلُ رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ that Every night, our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, comes down. إِلَى السَّمَاعِ الدُّنْيَا هِينَ يَبْقَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ الْآخِرِ That he stays there till the last part of the night, the last third of the night, which is just before the start of Fajr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming down the way it befits His Majesty. Imagine your Lord is coming down every night, every night, not just the Ramadan nights, He's coming down every night and He's asking you questions. There are three amazing questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us. And the first of those questions is, فَيَقُولَ مَنْ يَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَهُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Whoever wants, whoever's asking for something, I will give it to him. وَمَنْ يَسْعَلْنِي فَأَعْطَيْهِ وَمَنْ يَسْعَلْنِي فَأَعْطِيهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that whatever your question is, whoever the sa'il is, whoever the questioner, uh, the one who's questioning, the one who's asking, I will give it to him. وَمَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرْنِي فَأَغْفِرْ that whoever is asking for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I will forgive. 
I will forgive. What an amazing hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming down every night only and saying to us that whatever you need, the ones who are repenting, the ones who are returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give him everything and anything that he wants. Understand my brothers and sisters that we are going to make mistakes. We make mistakes. It's not that we are going to make mistakes. We are going to make mistakes in our life. We need to return back to Allah as soon as we make mistake. And if we are the ones who are returning back to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe all our sins. And another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Musa and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu an qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna Allah ta'ala yabsutu yadahu al-layli liyatubu musi'u al-nahar. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, that he spreads his hand forward, that he brings his hands forward the way it befits his majesty. He's spreading his arms forward. And in the night, for the ones who are, when they make a commit a mistake, from the night till the morning, he does that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَيَبْسُطُ يَدَهُ النَّهَارُ لِيَتُوبُ مُسِعُ اللَّيْلِ مُسِعُ اللَّيْلِ That Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the night till the morning, from the morning till the night, whoever is sinning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spreads his arm forward for forgiveness, for giving him, for whoever seeks forgiveness, to give him, to give him his mercy. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadith says, حَتَّى that till the sun will rise from the west. So basically what does that mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us and he will keep on forgiving us till the sun rises from the west, meaning till the day of judgment. That is when just the, one of the major signs when the sun will rise from the west, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, my brothers, my sisters, for me, for myself, that we are committing mistakes. Understand our Rabb is there, who is for spreading his arms forward, who is spreading his hands forward of mercy from night till morning and from morning till night. So if we commit sins in the night time, in the daytime, it doesn't mean that we're going to wait for Qiyamul Layl or because Allah comes down on the first heavens and then no, 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 Allah is there at all times. This is what the hadith is saying. When you do a mistake, you go back to Allah. When you do a mistake, you go back to Allah. Don't make it a verbal thing. Make it something which is from the heart. Make it something which is from the heart and you really are feeling it. Understand, you know, a lot of brothers say, you know, I've done so many mistakes, I'm never going to be forgiven. There is no way Allah will forgive me. And you know what, I will always, um, you know, it will become very difficult for me and uh, I cannot, there's no way back. Understand, an ayah from the Quran, from Surah Zumar, an amazing ayah that really summarizes that far. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا إِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَصْرَفُوا Allah says the ones who are extravagant, the ones who have gone a hundred miles far away from my mercy, from my mercy and they have kept on sinning. أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Allah is saying, do not despair the mercy of Allah. Do not despair. Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mercy is amazing. لا تقنت من رحمة الله لا تقنت من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all the sins. My brothers, my sisters. Allah is 
forgiver of all the sins of our life. Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. Allah is the one who, who will forgive everything. Allah is the one who will give his mercy, who will shower his mercy. We have to come back to Allah. Make this goal in Ramadan that you are the ones who are coming back to Allah. Point number two that I really wanted to mention is that we, we often, you know, we are, and, 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 and uh, often, you know, we speak about uh, patience and we, we say, you know, uh, patience is uh, one of the most important things and uh, when we are fasting, it gives us patience so we can stay away from the food, we can stay away from the drink, we can stay away uh, from say you out, we can stay away from uh, all these things that you know they they um, the things uh, which keeps us away from the ibadah, keeps us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more patience we're gonna have, the more uh, we are gonna get close to Allah. But you know what? I actually want to tell you that you really want to work on something, patience will come to you. Patience is not something that you are going to be working hard. Patience is, is going to come to you. If you're fasting, you're going to be impatient. One thing I really want you to do is to be grateful. You know, don't be like someone who's patiently waiting to eat when you break your fast. What am I going to eat? Constantly thinking about that. Okay, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to have fun as soon as I break fast. No, no, no. Be grateful to Allah. Be grateful. Oh Allah, you put me in this why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this amazing thing. Be grateful. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, as li wa ana ajizi bi. That the fasting is for me and I will reward for fasting. I will reward for fasting. Did you know what it means? It says on the day of judgment, if you are the ones who have wronged some people, that your deeds will be going and they will be going to other people until uh, your account, that person's account is cleared with you. But the rewards of fasting will not leave you. Why? Because Because Allah will reward you for that. So understand that we need to be grateful to Allah. We need to be grateful to Allah that Allah allowed us an opportunity that we can come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we really need to focus or, or on our self-control. We really need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to be constantly thinking about the ni'mas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than what we have Allah has showered. Understand, you know, being patient all the time can have a negative connotation and I really mean it because uh, if you are being patient all the time you're thinking about uh, you know what next I'm being patient there is nothing coming my way and what what's gonna happen to me next a lot of people actually get numb they say you know what we just have to be patient and patient every quarter whenever we ask a question be patient be patient you just become very negative you, you think that religion is not really helping you out. But understand, if we start becoming grateful on the other end, we start counting the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Patience and gratefulness work hand in hand. And look, I actually want to tell you something from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. And this is an amazing ayah, part of the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ إِبَادِ يَشْشَكُورٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there are very few people who are grateful. This ayah should shake me to the core. It should shake you all to the core. Why? Because you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there are very few who are grateful. Very few. Are me and you, are we one of those few that are always grateful whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did? does something for our benefit are we grateful that ramadan came to us or we just keep on complaining you know what i'm going to be fasting i'm not going to have breakfast i'm not going to have lunch i'm going to be up in the night i mean i'm not really enjoying this ramadan i'm hungry i'm tired you know the salaf used to say this to understand what really gratefulness is the salaf used to say qala salaf qayyidu ni'malllahi bi shukrillah that they what it really means that count the blessings of Allah that Allah has bestowed upon you and then you will truly thank Allah. When we start counting the blessings of Allah, count the blessings of Allah. We're in this country. 
We are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're in the houses, we're eating well, we're drinking well, we're sleeping well, we're healthy. So many blessings of Allah. We're with the family, we're still complaining. We are far better than millions of people. And even then we complain. Subhanallah, what a great saying. Qayyidu ni'mallah bi shukrillah. That start counting the blessing, count the blessings of Allah and then you will truly thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now moving on to point number three, raising our standards. I mean this is one of the biggest things. We need to raise our standards. We need to make this Ramadan the best Ramadan as compared to the Ramadan of last year. We need to really work hard. We need to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that really, oh Allah, I've been yearning for this month. Oh Allah, I've been waiting for this month. Oh Allah, now is my time to shine. So now is our time to shine, to really show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by raising. And not, not uh, saying uh, any, you can, it's your own goals. I'm not saying eat less. I'm not saying, you know, do qiyamul layl. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying that. What I'm really telling you is, that raise your standard. If you wake up for suhoor, then make sure you wake up earlier and pray to Allah. Because what a great time. We said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُنَذِّلُ رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ إِلَى السَّمَاعِ الدُّنْيَا حَيْنَ يَبْقَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ الْآخِرِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming down to the first of heavens till the time of Fajr comes in. So wake up early, pray to Raka, pray Raka 10, ask Allah, and you know, pray to Allah, raise your standards, raise your standards. Don't be like wishy-washy people who make all these goals for Ramadan and they've achieved nothing. You know, you ask someone, oh, I'm gonna be reading 30 Ajzad, I'm gonna be reading this, I'm gonna be doing this, I'm gonna be doing that. But you ask them on the last day of Ramadan, oh, I still haven't opened the Quran yet. I'm still working on that yet. Don't be like that. Be like those people that really want to do something for the sake of Allah and they want to excel. Understand, if you put all your effort, even if you did not get the desired results, if your efforts were there, Allah will, Allah will grant you success and Allah will give you the due uh, fare for what, whatever you have worked hard for. And, and really, you know, um, the, one of the things uh, we need to ask ourselves that we have to better our Ramadan from the last year's Ramadan. If there were some regrets you had last year, may not be this Ramadan that you are regretting again, as you always say, oh no, I wish I could have done something. I wish I could have done something better. You know, really be truthful to yourself. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that فَلَوْ صَدَقُ اللَّهَ لَا فَلَوْ صَدَقُ اللَّهُ فَلَوْ صَدَقُ اللَّهَ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that indeed that these people who are truthful to Allah, those people who are truthful to Allah, why? You know, because they are doing best, doing their best. They are constantly doing their best. They're constantly involved in that. So if you really want to do, be truthful to Allah, then walakin, lakin, khayran, khayran lahum. That they are doing the best. You know, they are always doing their best. So we should be the ones who should be doing our best. So really, we need to understand. And you know, if you have uh, some brothers who will uh, motivate you, stay with them, do all these uh, you know, all the tools that you have and raise your standards. Don't regret, like, you know, when Ramadan ever starts every every year, then we start counting the days, when is it going to end? But when it's about to end, then we start uh, saying, oh, you know what, I wish I did that, I wish I did that. Don't, don't do that. Be that person that will, you know, will motivate uh, and that will work hard in this month of Ramadan, you will not regret. And that's why I say, make Ramadan every day count. Every day count. Every day. Don't just be 
uh, like you know um, you know what I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and um, it makes something like that every day of your life will count like you know Ibn Sirin um, Ta'ala used to say uh, that he would say or oh, son of Adam your days are numbered all of your days are numbered and he says that every single day that goes past part of your life goes away with that so do not waste your time make every day count what an amazing saying he's saying that your days are numbered and every single day that goes past takes your life part of your life with that so don't be like those people you know that we are constantly um, you know thinking about uh, oh, I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and we don't achieve anything make this Ramadan where you only achieve everything and I want to leave you with the last part every advice every reminder every lecture everything that you listen and unfortunately we're not going to be going anywhere we're going to be in the house but because of the inter the advent of internet we are listening to a lot of advice i want to tell you that take every single word that you're listening you don't know one word or one line of what you're listening will change your life don't be like you know when we're listening to something we just zoom out and then we we just uh, zone, uh, uh, you know, and we just think, you know, oh yeah, I got the point, and uh, we start listening to something only for Baraka. We're only listening lectures for Baraka. We're only listening Quran for Baraka. Don't be that. When you listen to something, listen to every single word, and I really mean it. Why? Because one word can change your life around. <laughs> فاستغفر الله إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمةك يا رحم الراحمين and I just wanna my last thing I wanna tell you a hadith that Atabari mentions um, uh, in his uh, book of Tafsir and he brings it about Ramadan what's it, what an amazing hadith in itself it's got treasures upon treasures he says إِذَا قَبْلَ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ آتَاكُمْ رَمَضَانَ شَهْرُ بَرَكَةً that he says when uh, just before Ramadan is about to come and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this month as the source of barakah as to multiply barakah in our lives every part of our lives everything the barakah in Quran the barakah in zikr the barakah in our wealth the barakah in, in uh, our health the barakah in our houses and everything and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says yaghshakumullah fi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down as it befits his majesty and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts descending down upon every single one of us you know how many times we've seen in Ramadan this barakah for everyone it's not just barakah for us even in the school um, you know in the school setting where I work we work with a lot of non-Muslims Ramadan becomes a barakah for them as well that we get to leave early and they get to leave early that's just a lame example but it just becomes a barakah source of barakah for everyone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive will wipe will uh, forgive and wipe your sins away your mistakes away that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your du'as what a powerful word that whatever du'as that we are making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept every single du'a 
اللهم أتى قائك من النار يا رب العالمين و الله save us from the fire in this month of Ramadan و الله اللهم تقبل صيامنا و تقبل قيامنا و تقبل ركوعنا و تقبل سجودنا و تقبل دعاءنا و تقبل صلاتنا و تقبل من كل أعمالنا يا رب العالمين we ask Allah that everything that we are doing ya Allah as Allah, uh, Rasulullah mentioned the hadith, وَيَسْتَجِيبُ الدُّعَاءَ That he will accept all the du'as we make. And then an amazing thing, وَيُبَاهِ بِكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call upon the angels and say, look at my servants, how they're worshipping me. So be mindful when Allah is saying to the angels, look at my servants, how they're worshipping me. Be in our worships while we are fasting and while in the night time. So that Allah can boast that inni a'lamu ma'la that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can boast that these are my servants. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, told the angels that you don't, I know what you don't know. And then Allah subhanahu wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَعَارُ اللَّهُ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ خَيْرًا That, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, that we should always engage. We should always be doing something khair in this month. We should always be busy in doing khair. Either we're giving sadaqah, either we're fasting, either we're making a skar, either we're reading Quran, we're spending time with the family, and any of those things. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّ الشَّقِيَّ مَنْ حُرِمَ فِي رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَإِنَّ الشَّقِيَّ مِنْ حُرِمَ فِي رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ that shaqiyah, uh, shaqi is someone who is a loser. And Allah is saying, the, and who, he is a loser who has been born from the rahmah of Allah, from all those things that I've mentioned. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that really makes this month a source of blessing and barakah for us. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free us from this disease, this pandemic that we are in and allow us to worship you in the masajid, in, in the jama'ah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allow us to experience the Ramadans as we have always experienced. O Allah, keep our families, our communities safe. O Allah, have your mercy as you mentioned in the hadith upon us. O Allah, accept all our du'as. O Allah, make us the ones who are busy always doing something khair. O Allah, not make us the shaqi, Ya Allah. Do not make us the loser, Ya Allah. The ones who lose, Ya Allah. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barak lana fi ma aatayt, wa qina wa sarif anna bi fadlika sharra ma qadayt, fa innaka taqdi bil haqqi wa la yukda ilayk, fa innahu yudillu ma wala ayt, wa la yu'izu man aadayt, tabarak ta rabbana wa ta'alayt, la malja wa la manja minka illa ilayk, laka alhamdu ala ma qadayt, nastaghfiruka min jami'a al-dhunub. نستغفرك من جميع الذنوب ونتوب إليك يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم تقبل صيامنا وتقبل ركوعنا وتقبل صلاتنا وتقبل تلاوة القرآن وتقبل وتقبل صيامنا يا رب العالمين وتقبل دعاءنا يا رب العالمين وتقبل سجودنا يا رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك